With many movie theaters remaining closed across Canada, Welland filmmaker Natalie Bebo took the unusual step of premiering her new documentary right here at the Canview Drive-In. As a storyteller, I had always done stories about something else, somewhere else. They were about things I didn't know, people I didn't know. I had never come home to do a movie, and I had never done a movie about somebody I knew. Natalie accomplished both with The Walrus and The Whistleblower. The film explores the global issue of animal captivity through a local lens. The documentary features Phil Demers, a former Marineland trainer who made headlines after quitting his dream job and becoming an animal rights activist. I was familiar with uh, Phil's battle with Marineland for many, many years, obviously, having been raised in the region and having known Phil since uh, we were kids. But I didn't decide to make a film about this until I saw him testifying at the Senate in favor of a law to ban the captivity of whales and dolphins. And although I had thought that this would make a really great movie for a lot of years, I actually didn't have the courage and um, it wasn't the right time for me to, to jump in. The media seemed to be covering it a lot in 2012. It felt more like an expose type story that wasn't quite ready for a long form treatment. Phil was on hand for the premiere and says that Natalie was the right person to tell the story. Everything, every which way that I look at everything, that uh, is presented to me as an opportunity, I look whether or not it's something that's going to uh, help further a, uh, a cause or not. And in this case, uh, there was no question in having had uh, multiple conversations with Nat that both the film was going to be in the right hands and the project was going to be right. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. You can imagine how vulnerable a person like I am is in with, in with what I'm trying to accomplish if what it is that I'm trying to do is in the wrong hands. What was your first reaction when seeing the film as a viewer? Within the first 15 seconds, I knew that it was beyond the scope of what I could have imagined. And at that point, I was more a viewer. And, and that's what was nice of it all, is that it snapped me out of all of a sudden, whereas I had expectations, I had I wonder and all these different things, I had, I, had, I had curiosity. And as that got washed away, within the first 15 seconds, I'd realized that I was now a gripped viewer. We're from this, a similar ground, if you will, right? A similar earth, and so... Natalie says the common roots she and Phil shared growing up in Welland helped develop a trust between the pair that was an asset in the so filmmaking process that took three years. We did have to try to negotiate ways of working together because we'd had this familiarity, but also because he is um, had he was quite a few years into this very ugly fight, and so... Phil's got a lot of baggage, you know, Phil, Phil has a lot uh, of weight on his shoulders and I had to come into a story midstream, if you can imagine, right? He was six years into litigation, into a very public fight, and I was coming in as an outsider watching this. So while he jumped in with two feet and he was very sure that he wanted to do it, he, his conversations with me, his interviews with me, put it this way, were like we'd been talking for six years. And so there was this tremendous amount of catching up that I had to do. He would make references to things I didn't know. So I had to jump into his, his world very quickly and do a lot of research, uh, which meant talking to a lot of people in this, uh, on this issue across the country, internationally, trying to understand captivity, how marine land fit into it, of course. So all of that process was um, a, a bit of a um, uh, trial and error process, I guess, between director and subject that we had to work through. The premiere was a laid-back affair. In front of friends and family, Phil and Natalie spoke about the documentary before the sun went down and the curtain went up. It's extraordinary. Uh, my children are here. Uh, my husband is here. My parents are here. My sister's here. My cinematographer's here. I think there are people here that I haven't seen in a long time here tonight. Um, but the people I'm really most excited about are, of course, um, uh, you know, my family, my parents, uh, my sister, my brother is here with his wife and my kids um, because they uh, have seen me really up close deal with a very difficult film, very difficult story, a difficult subject um, and, and a difficult launch because of COVID. So this is really it. This is the theatrical premiere for us at a drive-in where I used to come as a kid and now I've got my own kids here watching their mom's movie. Conclusion. It is my nightmare. Screenings of the documentary will be taking place throughout southern Ontario for the remainder of September. For more information, visit walrusandwhistleblower.com. Reporting for the source, I'm Jordan James.